Hello everybody, this is Taika, and in this video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give you an overview of the Bucket GUI project, and I'm going to give it, go over what it does, how to use it, and some basic things like that. So, just getting right into it, you're going to want to download it by clicking download, and it will take you to the latest file, you're just going to download the EXC, I've already done that, and put it right here. Now what I'm going to do for organizational purposes is create a new folder called Bucket GUI, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to pop the exe in there, open up the folder, and open up the bucket GUI. Now it's going to open directly up. Sometimes it gives you an update and you're going to have to update the actual application and just let that do what it needs to do. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the Super Start tab, which is basically what your run.bat would be, but advanced. And I'm going to show you how to start up your server. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, I'm going to open up this folder again so you can see everything get created. I'm going to download the latest recommended build. Now over here you have the maintenance which allows you to download the latest recommended, the latest developer build or download, I mean beta build or the latest developmental build and you can also download a custom build number and there's the latest build numbers right here. You can have a link to the bucket and you can receive the current version on server start notify me when an update is available. Now what I'm going to do is just to simplify the process is click download the latest recommended build and I'm going to let this download. And when that's done you're going to want to go over to the Java server area and select all the proper things. So first you want to select your Java version. Right now I have Java 7 64 bit so I'm just going to select that. I'm going to set the minimum RAM, I just recommend keeping that the same unless if you know what you're doing. And I'm going to set the max RAM to around 2 gigs, so right there works. Uh, you have your jar file, so you can make sure that is the correct directory, which it should be by default. And then you have your custom things, which is the uh, extra little Java commands, launch commands and things like that. And then you have a remote server, and I'm not going to really get into that and then you can launch the server so you can either start the server right here or you can launch it I'm just gonna hit launch server and that will start the server and as you can see it displays the command prompt in here instead of having its own command prompt window you can see down here under the info you have your uh, C the, your GUI CPU usage your server CPU usage your total CPU usage so this is your total computer, this is what your server is using, and this is what this program is using. And it's the exact same thing over here with your system RAM. You can restart, reload, and kill the server. So if I restart it, you can see in the command prompt it saves everything and it's going to restart the server. If I reload the server, it's going to do just about the exact same thing and then I can kill the server. So if I do that, it's going to just abruptly stop the server so the server has been stopped. Over players, I'm going to go over that in just a sec. Superstart, I already went over. What we can do is go to the plugins. Now here you can install plugins through this system. So I'm not sure exactly what they have on here, but if I search up Essentials, they have it. So I can install Essentials just by clicking on this and then picking what essentials I want to be installed so I can open this up go to the latest recommended build and I'm going to get the basic essentials zip and I'm going to install that selected version and yes and then it should download and install essentials so I'm going to open up my plugins right here and wait for this to finish it's going rather slow to be honest and it's done so essentials has been added and as you can see I have all the essentials plugins right there I'm going to give it a little test. I'm going to see what plugins it has on here. If it runs off a of bucket dev or what. So actually I'm going to do build dash a build mob. So yeah, they have that. Um, world edit. And they have world edit too, so that's cool. I'm going to download the, uh, I think this uses bucket dev, I'm pretty sure. Install select version. I'm going to install that. So this makes running a server from your computer much, much easier. You don't even, if you know exactly how to do everything, you don't even need to go to your actual server. I mean, you don't need to go to the internet and get your plugins. You can just use the system it provides. And then if I start the server, it should say all the plugins in here has worked successfully. 
As you can see, it's doing all the essentials. It enabled world edit, and everything should be working. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Minecraft really fast, and I'm going to connect to my local host, and you should see me pop up right over here. Yep, there I am. So, I'm going to try fitting all this into one area. I can op myself by right clicking and opping myself. You are now op. I can also de op, kick myself. So, if I kick, I've been kicked from the server. I can also ban myself, which I do not want to do. That seems to be a glitch, by the way. I can give myself something, so it just types the command in for me, give, and I'm going to give myself one of ten. So that should give me ten stone, and it has. So, yay, and I can't build right there because I'm not opt anymore, so I'm going to opt myself. So this is really extremely useful. If I go under players, you can see two of me for some reason. You can make it bigger or smaller, you can change how the views work. I can double click on, I mean I can right click and get all the same options. Super start, we already went over error logging. This is the errors that it gives, well the errors that it gave you on the server start or while the server is going. And I do have one error and that is that the uh, MOT.txt does not exist and I created one for me which is just fine, it's just an essentials thing under here. The MOT file. I can go to my task manager and this allows you to make it so if something happens then this happens so uh, for example I'm not going to go over it too much there's going to be a page that I'm going to link you to so the triggers is if th something happens so if the server is to let's say if the server is to stop then the server is to start just like that and then I can save that I can just call it start and save and then that will be in there I can then go to my server and if I'm to stop the server it should start the server just like that now there's a lot more little features and little tricks you can do with this the full page of all the actions and triggers will be right here but next we have the plugins which I already went over the installed plugins which I didn't go over you can go right here, you can get more info, so that will open up information on the plugin, all the commands for the plugin, and descriptions of the commands, as well as the version authors and all of that. If you, uh, you also have options to update it, view versions, go to the project page, which I believe is the bucket dev page, but it's not opening. And it seems it couldn't download the data. It did not get that if it's playing. Okay, let's try world edit. Uh, project page. There we go. And it works just fine. So that will open up the bucket dev project page for that plugin. You can also remove the plugin and refresh the list. Then over here we have server options. Now this is obviously options for the server. Now if I'm to ban myself, I should be put into that ban list. So I'm going to join the server. And then I'm going to ban myself. Oh, got to de -op myself and then ban myself and then I have been banned, the ban hammer has spoken, now if I go under the server options and refresh it then I will be in that list and it will show all the server options here but you don't have to ban yourself to see the uh, options, you can obviously just refresh and this will show up here you can change everything so if I click on the value and I can change whitelist to true okay and then I can add people to the whitelist, for example Notch, add him to the whitelist, and that will add him to the whitelist, I can refresh it to see him. You can also change all the other options that would be in your properties file. And this will allow you to create backups, uh, import, export backups, and do things like that. I believe that there's actually a, a backup option for this. Yep, backup. So you can do on something, the whole entire server will back up. So I can cancel that. If I go to, so that's backup. And then the last thing we have options and info. Now under the about, it just gives you all the information about the launcher and it can open up the updater from here. Then you have your application settings. So you could do the languages. You can do the config options from your updater or server folder. You have your tab pages. So you can uh, display what tabs you want to show. So if I wanted to, I could disable the error logging tab and that will disable that. 
Under here I can uh, check for updates on startup, run a server when GUI starts, so right once this opens up I can set it to run the server, and there's an option to reset all of the settings. Under here is the computer info, so the computer I'm currently running on. Then we have the text output, so you can show the time, which is right here. If I go over here, uncheck show time, it will, when something happens, say, it will not display the time anymore. Um, if I do show date, I can show the time and date if I wanted to. So I can go back over here, type something, and it will show the time and date of whatever happens. Then I can change the coloring in the log, so as you can see green and blue. Blue just means info and green is the player event, and then you have warning, severe, unknown. You can set the font and then you can see the preview, so I can make it bigger, make it something ooh, something unnecessary or ridiculous, so I can do that. And then when things happen, that's what it'll look like, that obviously looks terrible. But you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, then you have the tray and sound, so you can minimize it to the tray or not. Allow, always show balloons, on player join, on player. So this is, these are just sounds, so you can set a sound on there. So if I check on player join and somebody joins, it'll play a sound. And all of those. Then you have the sound settings, so you can do those. And then you have options to donate, tell us what you think, and other things. So that is the entire Thing. I think it's really good to use, especially if you're running a server from your own computer and you are doing it that way. It is a great tool for you and I highly recommend you use it. So, thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe to this video and to TechCut US. Have a great day and goodbye.